two. Good. We're recording. So welcome to our seventh um, online art docent uh, lesson. And we only have one more after this. And believe it or not, we'll have made it through the whole school year with uh, just online art. So that's pretty impressive. Today we are uh, doing sculpture. We're making something three-dimensional. So two-dimensional art is art that's flat, right? It, you, if you put your hands on it, it's just, it, it, it's just flat, it doesn't do anything. And three-dimensional art has shape to it, it has form. And so today we're going to be working on making little cats like this. Uh, this is the one that I made as a practice, and we are going to learn how to do that. But first, you're probably wondering, why are we making a black cat in May? Well, that is a fantastic question. Do you remember um, when we did the art lesson on the Northern Lights and um, we talked about art for a cause? And so there's a lot of artists that sometimes use their artwork to um, talk about the things that they care about. Well, our artist today, let's see, I'll, I'll find a, see if I can find a picture of him. Oh, of course I can't. Um, our artist today really loved cats, like really, 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 really loved cats. I think he had like 50 some cats. Um, and so one of the things that he, um, he did a lot of art about was cats. He actually became famous for it. Let's see if I can find um, a picture of him. And his name is really hard for me to say um, because he was uh, born in Switzerland um, and had a French name. So um, I'm gonna show a picture. This guy right here, his name is Theophile um, Steinlin. And this is him sculpting a cat in 1913. You can see where my, my little mouse is at. Miss Griffin, we are looking at the um, Wikipedia words. We don't see a picture of him. Oh, that's so sad. Here, what about now? Now we can see him. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is uh, Theophile Alexandra Steinlin. And there he is. There's a, um, a cat that he sculpted. And ours is going to be a little bit smaller, but I want you to pay attention a little bit to the shape of the cat, right? So who can tell me what basic shape we see here in the cat's body? What my little mouse is doing. Anybody know what basic shape this is? Oval. Oval. Fantastic. And what is the basic shape of the cat head? Circle. It's a circle. circle. And what circle. are the what's the basic shape of the cat? Triangle. 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 And then the cat oh. nose. Doop, doop. Triangle. Oh, yeah. Triangle. Triangular. Triangle. So today we're going to be working primarily with ovals, circles, and triangles. And we're going to be using that to make our cats. Just like Theophile, Theophile, sorry. That's what he did. Um, he is very famous for, let's go here for this portrait. Can you see it, the cat? And so this was a um, painting that he did. He used to make posters to help companies advertise. And this was a location where people would gather to eat and drink and socialize. And it was a place called Le Chant Noir, which basically means the black cat. And um, and he definitely knew how to make cats because he loved them so much and he studied them. So we're going to sort of take this idea, this, this idea of this black cat here with this warm toned background, and we're going to do a recreation of our own um, Theophile style cat. Um, we call it Art Nouveau, which is right here. And Art Nouveau was a really, really fancy um, era of art. Um, that we looked at it and it was so fancy, like we couldn't even do it to teach you. So that's why we did sculptures. But, um, but you know, it had lots of really intricate details here and there. It had a very distinct style. Um, let's see if I wrote about it. Um, this was around the early 1900s, right? So this was the turn of the last century. So this was a while ago. Um, and I don't know, I think, I really think that's, that's all I'm going to tell you about this page because we have a book and I'm going to read you the book about him. Um, but first we're going to get started straight into um, our sculpting. So we're going to go over really quickly some of our 
boom, supplies. All right, so you, um, careful with the stairs. Um, so you obviously don't need to have this book. I'll have that book, so you don't have to worry about that. You should have a couple of things. You should have about three ounces of clay. Okay, does everybody have their three ounces of their air dry clay? It doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes it's white. Sometimes it's called terracotta, which is like an orangey color, but we mostly gave out white. You should have a pea-sized ball of yellow. <laughs> hey, Callie, can I borrow your green? My yellow, it died. It's like, it's like a bouncy ball at this point, so. Um, Hopefully you're doing better than me. Um, if you don't have yellow, you could use any colors for the cat size. Um, you should have three toothpicks. You should have a paintbrush. You should have some black acrylic paint. Yours will probably be in a tub. Is that, here, give me that box. Um, and you should have, um, <laughs> you should have, uh, we called it a paint palette. You don't necessarily need a palette. You could just have a piece of paper because if you're painting, you can usually just paint right out of the, um... <laughs> you can paint. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having issues. All of my air dry clay, air dried um, in like a week. Um, you should be able to use your black paint right out of your tub. And and the other last thing you'll need, and this is an important thing, is this piece of orange construction paper. It's five inches by seven inches. It's folded in half the hot dog way, the portrait way, and it's cut up about two inches. Uh, you won't necessarily need a glass of water to clean your brush. However, um, it's good to have one around, and you're also going to need a glue stick. Um, Eden and Parker, do you have a question? Um, for the acrylic paint, are we going to be painting the clay? We are going to be, paint? we are going to be painting the clay directly. Um, so that's what the paint is for. Here, Gator. Thank you. You're welcome. So I have found a paint, I mean a clay that isn't totally solid yet. So da da. there's my, there's my yellow clay. We're going to see if we can work. I'm telling you, this was perfectly fine two weeks ago, but apparently my house got really dry. All right, so we have all the pieces, right? No, oh, actually. Did I miss actually, something? Um, no, we were um, we were here on time, um, except um, we um, my my computer's audio didn't work, and so we had to go on my sister's audio, and that didn't work, and so now we're on my brother's computer. And it finally is working, but so we missed lots. Okay, well, if you um, basically all you missed is the history of why we're doing what we're doing. And if you want okay. to know that, you can watch the video when we put it on YouTube, which okay. will be on YouTube tomorrow. Or you can go to, um, ba -ba -ba -da. you can go to crestwoodpta.com, which is this web page okay. right here. And then you can hit the art docent program button and then this will give you all the information that you need about this art lesson okay um and all your materials so anything that you need to know is there we actually have all of the art lessons on here kiddos if you ever want to go back and do them again they're all on okay. this page so okay thank you yep all right so now we're going to start with the tricky part um actually it's okay it's not that tricky you are basically going to make a box for your cat to live in um Nah, we're not going to start with that. Let's start with the tricky part. Now, I'm going to go with what I said originally. Go ahead and grab your three ounces of clay. And so three ounces of clay. And I want you to roll it up um, So into the shape of kind of a short, fat hot dog, right? Um, I said that you needed a paint palette. You don't really need a paint palette, but it would be good if you had an extra piece of paper. You could use printer paper or the back of a envelope or whatever you want to roll your clay on um, because it, this is clay. It's actually clay that's made from clay from the earth. 
Um, so it will get things a little bit dirty, but if you just roll it and then occasionally squish it and then roll it with your hand, it's gonna make this kind of cylinder shape, okay? Well, not, not a kind of cylinder shape. It hopefully will make a cylinder shape. Um, mine looks like a giant Tootsie Roll, but you know, one I wouldn't eat. Um, and I know that you don't have rulers, but mine's going to be about one, two, mine's about three inches tall. This doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. We, we only have, we only have like this much. That much clay use whatever, however amount of clay you have. Okay. So if you we need to make, have, like, we have like, the, it's, it's the right amount. Yeah, everybody got the same amount. Miss Barber, I have I have a ruler right next to me and I measured it. It's um three inches and four sixteenths. Wow, that's pretty good. All right, so we all have uh, something like this now, right? I'm gonna take a toothpick just because it's fun, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut my I'm gonna cut the top third off of my roll. And so I'm going to fit in a third would be if it was three inches, I'd be like, here's one inch. Here's two inches. Here's three inches. I'm going to take about an inch off of the top of my clay. You can rip it off or you can do what I did and cut it with a toothpick. And to cut it with a toothpick, you just push it down into the clay. Toothpicks are very versatile. So when Joey, end, do you have a question? Okay. In the end, you should have something that looks like a little marshmallow and then something that looks like, you know, like a rectangle. Uh, you should have a cube and a rectangular prism, basically. Are we using white or yellow? Um, you're using the big amount of clay. So you should have a big amount and you should have a little amount. My this dad is, said this we is, needed balls. You are going to use the, the one that's little for later. That's going to be our cat eyes. But for now, we're making our cat body. Okay. So um i also think i'm going to take a little section off the bottom just a tiny little bit just, just going to cut it off right off, I have a question. right off the bottom yeah and then so i have a little it chunk with the end of this you can cut it however you want as long as it's not like something big and sharp and scary all right, so now you should have three pieces of clay. You should have like a rectangular prism, a cube, and then just like a little tiny section here. This is gonna be our cat body. This is gonna be our cat head, and this is gonna be our cat tail. For now, I want you to set aside your head and your tail, and I want you to grab the body. So we're gonna look at kind of the shape of a cat. I'm gonna put this um, picture up again, and we're gonna look at the shape. If we had a basic oval body, right? Um, I mean, this one, I guess would be kind of a sideways oval, but cats aren't oval. What do we've noticed here? It's got a little bit of an arch to the back and in the front, the legs go kind of in and then push out toward feet. So we're gonna try to mold this body part of the cat. We're just gonna try to give it a little bit of shape. And this is the part where it gets a little bit tricky because we're not gonna make the cat, that we're not gonna make a cat that looks just like the one that's on there. That would be silly, but we are gonna try to do our best. So I'm taking my clay and I'm just sort of squishing it into a shape and I'm gonna give it maybe a rounded back and I'm gonna bring its feet forward and I'm gonna bring its body out. I'm gonna give it a neck and I'm just gonna kind of mold it until I think it looks like a cat sitting. Without it. You see how I make it? It kind of looks like a nose. <laughs> it looks like I made a little face. Um, <laughs> but so I'm just gonna keep molding my cat until I think it looks like the body of a cat. My and body. I'll put mine down here. Um, so you have a sample of the one that I did. So you can here, see, see look at the kitty she made. Sort of the shapes. So you can see that it kind so of, have to it dents like in. Play-Doh left. You make Play-Doh stuff all the time. Yeah. Right here, so see like it curves on the back. So I'm gonna see if I can sort of match that shape as best as I can. Well, I wanna maybe give it a puffier chest, the bring the legs in, add some feet. Okay. And although the cat is three dimensional, we're not actually gonna make it look like a real cat. It's gonna look like a real, 
cat that we sort of squished a little bit flat, a little bit, because, you know, I mean, it's not like we're Theophile Steinlin, Theophile, sorry, I gotta keep saying that, right? Of course, I don't know why I'm saying it with an Italian accent when he was French, but, um, okay. So we're gonna get our cat shapes going. Try standing it up, see if it stands. It'll stand up. So you can you make, wanna make sure it wider. stands. So make your base a little bit wider so it stands up, like squish the edges of the bottom out just a little bit and it'll stand up better. See what she's doing with her fingers. See how she's squishing those edges out. Is this good? Yeah, however you want it to look, right? It's gonna be your cat. The good news is that it will dry. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, it will be your cat. I mean, it's just the body. So yeah. that looks good. Yeah. So. So you should have- We're um, gonna make a head eventually. Yep. Your basic shape. Does everybody have a basic cat shape? Yeah, it stands up. No. Can I help, can I help you make yours? Okay. Now. Keep, I'll, I'll let you keep working on it for a minute. Um, one of the things that was pointed out is that, see the bottom of my cat? It looks like a little flat foot. It's super flat. And the reason I made it flat is so that I can get my cat to stand up, okay? And this is just the shape we're looking at. And um, I would just say, make sure the chest goes out and the legs go in. And there's a little flat part at the bottom for feet. The chest of the kid comes out here, just like that. So you're, yeah, yep. And the mm -hmm. back is, the back is arched. It looks like to me, it reminds me of a dinosaur neck, you know, like a, ooh, just a nice little curve there. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. here's is where the tail starts. You can see that. And, and then you just kind of flip it around and make sure it's the shape that you want on all the sides. Because smooth is it a, with your fingers. It rubs three-dimensional. Yep. Oh. Anytime you see a wrinkle or a dent, if you press gently on your fingers, if you go side to side, you can almost erase them. The body. The okay. There is going to be a side that you like the best, and that's the side that you're going to want to work with. Okay. So this is going to be my cat side that I like the best. Does it look like a cat, does it? But don't worry, it will. So how many people need more time? Those are great. The meeting ends at uh, 2.30. So, and if you can't stay the whole time, we will um, have our, we will have it posted on our YouTube page by tomorrow. And then you can go and pick up where you left off. All right. So here we are, cat body. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna set mine aside. Hold on. I'll lay it down so you can see it. And don't worry, this isn't, you're, you don't have to be finished with it, right? You're just gonna get the shape. We're not done. This is step one. Actually, step one was rolling the cylinder. Step two was giving it the shape. Um, everything else. Oh, mind will, your own business. Um, everything else will happen later. Um, we just, it's a step-by-step -step process. A lot of art, you don't just do like one layer and you're done. You do lots of multiple layers. And this is just a step, just a step. So I'm going to... I'm going to check on you all. I'm going to make your page, your faces really big. All right. There we go. I see some cats. I see. Yep. I see cats being held up. I see lots of adorable kitty cats. Does this I look see, good? Uh, all the ones that I've seen look great, actually. They're adorable cats. Yep. yep. And and remember, it's it's your world. So you get to make it. It's your cat. You Are get we to just make it. making the feet? Uh, the feet are going to be part of the body. We're not really making them separate. Let me show you again how I did the feet. All I did with the feet was um, just kind of bring it to a point at the bottom. So it looks like there's feet there. You can see sort of the ridge of the legs and we'll get there. But right now we're going to work on the head. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch off some clay for the ears. Maybe around the same size, little pinches. And I'm going to pinch off a little bit for the nose. Okay. My cat's going to have a huge head, but that's okay. Um, so you should have 
clay for ear, clay for ear, clay for nose, and then you should have a big lump left over. You're going to roll that into a ball. So you're going to make a little sphere, a little clay sphere. It's hard to get it to roll just right, so I just keep moving it with my hands and sort of adjusting. Trying what to did get you say? We're going to roll your head into a ball after you take out clay for the ears and the nose. So you're going to roll the head shape into a ball. And we're going to start with a circle. Well, obviously cats don't have circle heads, but we're going to start with a circle and then we're going to mold it and pinch it to get it into a cat shape. If this is the first time you have ever sculpted a cat, give yourself some grace, right? Because um, it's not easy and nobody really gets things perfect the first time. <laughs> The first time I sculpted anything. Yeah, right? Uh, clay is super fun. One of these tubs of clay, where is it? Shoop. One of these tubs of clay, they're not that expensive. And this is um, air dry. So maybe if you have a birthday coming up or something, you can be like, what do you want? And then you'd be like, I want clay. And then you can make cats all day long. All right. So you've got a head. And so I know that a cat head isn't a perfect circle. It actually is kind of a triangle shape. So I'm going to do, watch really carefully. I wish I got a zoom feature. I'm going to push in the sides of my cat head so that it goes to a point. Did you see that? So I took the circle and I sort of pushed it in and I'm going to make sure it looks the same on the other way. It kind of has a basic skull shape, right? So I'm going to kind of try to make a basic skull shape. And of course, we know that a cat skull is not the same as a human skull. But the idea is there's the top of the head and it goes in where there's a jaw. And we're just going to kind of pinch it around to kind of give it that sleek little cat like face. I'm going to make it come to a point in the front where there would be a cat nose. So I'm just going to play around with it. Um, if you've never seen a cat in person, it's probably going to be harder for you to figure this out than somebody who um, has a lot of cats and they totally understand the idea of what cat heads look like. So, let's see. And you know what? I didn't like my shape. So I'm going to re-roll it and I'm going to start over um, because that's what we can do. I actually think I have too much clay for my head, so I'm going to take out a little bit. And I'm going to make my cat head. It kind of has a flat top, um, kind of goes down triangle. I mean, really, it's kind of a triangle shaped head. But, you know, round because it's a head. So I've got like I think this looks good. Good. So when you have your basic cat head, go ahead and put it down. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. Why and you're does gonna, the body not look like a body at all? Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. And then um, you're going to take these little two pieces here at the ears, and you're just going to squish them into triangles. So I'm just squishing them. I'm squishing the top. I'm making the flat bottom. And I'm just going to squish, squish, squish into a triangle. There's one ear. And maybe it looks like my cat's going to have huge ears, and that's OK. Because, you know, it's art. We can make our cats look like whatever we want to make them look like. I want my ears to be roughly the same size. So if I'm looking at my ears right now, I've got one kind of fat, perfect triangle ear. And then I've got one sort of skinny, um, uh, you know, not quite the same. So I'm going to try to squish them so they look about the same size. Um, in real life, most people's ears are similar in size. It's not very often we see them shaped different. In cats, it's not very often we see them shaped different. Um, mine accidentally curled over my finger, and I think that's kind of cute. Maybe my cat will have a little curled ear. Okay. And then you're going to, once your ears are done, you should have a little tiny bit. I mean tiny. I mean like super tiny, super duper tiny. And you're going to make a very, very small triangle. And this is going to be your cat's nose. You don't want it to be too thick. You want it to be kind of flat. 
I'm kind of triangle shape, just basically. There's my little, so. Where are we? My, my nose keeps rolling away. Stop that looks rolling. so cool. Isn't that fun? All right. So we almost have all of our parts. The last thing that we need to do is make our cat tail. Um, so I'm going to take my clay and I'm just going to roll it a long worm. And I just do that by just whoop, rolling, rolling. <laughs> I mean, if I make my cattail too long, which I guarantee you, this is pretty long for a cattail. That's okay. Because I can always just take my toothpick and be like, chop and chop my tail shorter. So it's up to you. If you have extra clay, that's fine. You could, you could make a little something else with it later. Um, so you should have a tail, ears, a nose, a head, and a body. Everybody have those things? How thin should the tail be? Uh, it's up to you. So if you uh, look at a cat, I mean, you, the tail isn't going to be as thick as the body of the cat. But it's also not going to be like as thin as a toothpick. Um, so it's going to be somewhere in between. Uh, you decide. Maybe your cat has a really fluffy tail. So it looks thick, right? So maybe you have a fluffy tailed cat. Mine has a really sleek tail. So it's trying to be kind of thin. It just depends. So I'm going to give you a minute to finish that up. I'm going to drink my coffee because I haven't had any coffee today. Where do I get that skinny? Since I have a little extra, I'm going to make whiskers. You can do what? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and we're going to do some sculpting with our clay with our okay, toothpicks too. So. I have a curly tail. Yes, we're going to, we're going to, once we get it all put together, what we're going to do is we're going to carve out legs and we're going to carve out whiskers and we're going to curl the tail and we're going to do all of those things. So we remember this is steps. Um, we're doing a sculpture, so it's going to go piece by piece by piece. Um, thank you for your helpful directions in the chat, um, Mrs. Phillips. All right, so now we're going to put it all together. This is the part you're probably not going to like. We're going to take our clay body and I stood mine up you can't really tell and I'm going to take my toothpick and I'm going to jam it down the body of my cat I'm going to have to hold it in place so it doesn't get um but I'm not going to go all the way I'm going to leave some out so what you can see now is I've got a cat body with a little stick hanging out why do you think I put my toothpick in my cat body Cora Kelly family the Kelly family what do you think To hold the head. Yes, to hold the head on. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my head. I'm going to figure out which is the top, which honestly I can't tell anymore because because <laughs> I don't know. I'm having a hard day. And then I'm going to stick that cat head right on top. So you see that now? I have a head resting on a body. And the thing that's holding it in place is the toothpick. What you're also going to want to do is you're just going to want to squish it down a little bit more. And then you're going to use your um, fingers, if you can, or even the edge of another toothpick to try to push the pieces of clay together. The good news is, is that um, the paint will also hold your clay pieces together. And here's where you go and you finish shaping the shape of your cat head. So if this is the front, what do you want the back to look like, right? This is my, here's the back of my cat, here's the front. So I have my basic cat shape going. I'm pushing some little pieces of clay in with my toothpick just to get it kind of the shape that I want. Here's my cat. Okay. Whew, that's exhausting, that's hard work, right? Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to press on the ears. And so I just, um, this is where if you have a cup of water nearby, um, it would be good to get your fingers a little bit wet. I'm going to do something. Okay. This is going to be a little bit gross. I'm going to lick my finger. What? I'm licking my finger. It got a little bit wet and I'm going to get it a little bit wet on the top of my ear. A little bit wet. Ew, gross. And then I'm going to stick 
my clay on. You don't have to get it wet to stick it on, but it's kind of better. Um, I don't know if your parents want you licking clay. It's non-toxic. Um, or you can go really quick and go grab a glass of water and, uh, or just a little tiny bit of water and get your fingers wet and then add that. So you see, I have one ear added and I decided to keep my ear folded. And then I'm going to do the same thing, except for this time, instead of licking, I'm going to use the condensation from my coffee cup, which was a much better idea. Get it a little bit wet. See how slimy the clay gets when you get it wet? You probably can't see it, because it's, but it gets really slimy. And then go ahead and stick your ear to the other side. So when you're done, you should have a cat head with two attached ears. Okay. Ta da! Mine has really big ears. But that's okay. He likes it. He's one of those Rex cats. I don't know what they're called. They have really pointy ears. Ta da! -da. So right now I've got my cat body, my cat head, my cat ears. I can keep shaping those ears if I want. If I want to make them really pointy, I can do that. Do you have to? You can do whatever shape you want. You can do it however you want. Whatever works. Um, every artist here. Okay, we're gonna have like a we're gonna have a little chat right now. Every artist uses their own method. Every artist uses their own technique. Whatever works for you works for you. So you can't necessarily do it the exact same way other people do, um, because you got to try your own way. You got to figure that out. So do what you can. Um, to, to get the product that you want. That's the only advice I have for you. And the last thing we're going to do in this stage and get my finger a little bit wet again, I'm gonna flatten one, I'm gonna pinch part, one part of my tail so it's flat, see that? See how it's a little bit flat and pointy? I'm gonna pinch that flat and I'm gonna attach it to the back of my cat. And I'm gonna to try to smooth it in place, All right? So right now it's just hanging there. If I want my tail curly, I can go ahead and curl it up. So I made my cat tail into a loop. I don't know if you can see that. Do you see where I have it looping around? Um, you get to choose how you want your cat tail to look. Maybe it curls upward at an angle, maybe. Right now you're looking at the top of my cat. That probably doesn't help you. Okay, so here's my cat. There's my curly tail, right? There's a whole bunch of lines in my cat right now. Don't worry about it because remember, we're gonna be painting over it. And then I did realize that we forgot to add our nose. So I am gonna get my finger wet one more time with the condensation from my coffee cup. And I'm gonna put a little nose right at the top of my cat. I wish you could see it a little bit better. And you're gonna push that into the face as much as you can without ruining the shape of your head. Because we just want the idea of a nose, the indentation of a nose. Um, I think I made mine too big, so I'm just gonna take off extra pieces that I don't need. Okay, so I'm just gonna push that in to my cat face. So you can sort of see the shadow of it right now. So I've got my ears, my little pointy nose, my head, my body, and my tail. How are we doing? Is this hard? This is kind of hard. We've never done anything like this before. Can I show you mine? Mm -hmm. Be careful though, when you hold them around, they might fall apart a little. All right, these are great. The ones I can see are really great. Oh, good idea with the camera there, Sydney. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so now for the next part. This is where you let your artistic self be free. I mean, not that you haven't been doing that, but we're gonna look at the details of the cat. So I'm gonna share this picture one more time. And hopefully you can all see this cat picture here. Thumbs up if you can see it. Okay, so you yes, see we can. So you see here these lines on the legs. So we know that the cat has two front legs. So what this artist has done here, um, 
Steinlin has drawn little legs, little leg lines, and he's drawn little toes, and he's uh, made a little mouth, and he's even put in some whiskers. Um, maybe he even has this lump here for the back legs. You see the shape here? It's like a zoop. And, um, and he has drawn those lines. Now we're not gonna draw the lines with a pencil. We're going to etch those lines with our toothpick, right? So we are going to, um, we're going to just basically take the point of our toothpick and we're going here, I've got, this will actually help. I've got this book right here. Whoa. Okay, so we can see some of the lines. So I can look at this and know that I'm going to draw right here with the pointy part of one of my toothpicks. I'm going to push my toothpick into my clay and I'm going to draw the basic shape of a cat foot. Okay, do you see that? I wish I could zoom my camera, but I do have a line there. Um, my cat is a girl. Fantastic. And oh, you can also that. draw, um, you know, this line here for the back legs, like a little swooping line here for the back legs. Okay. And you can go to the face. You can draw, how I always draw a cat face is a little line down. And then I make it like a little smile. Whoop, my cat is happy. Little happy kitty cat. And then I can even make lines for whiskers. And that I can just push down on my toothpick if I want. Whisker thing? Yes. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the nose on. Um, if you do, you, can you go get a glass of water? Because it will help if you can get it really wet and get the face wet and it will stick better. Okay. Uh, one thing you don't need to worry about etching into your cat right now is eyes because we are going to be adding clay eyes. So I have my back leg, I have my front leg, I've got my mouth, I've got my whiskers. Um, I can, if I want, I can make some definition in the ears if I want. You know, give them a little, if you want your, um, so <laughs> here's where it gets complicated because we are doing, I keep looking at the camera and then I realize you can't see me. I have, you have no idea how many times I have stared at my camera into nothing. All right, so you gotta turn your cat over because your cat is three dimensional. So I have to draw those same lines on the back of my cat. So here's the front feet and then. Wait, Miss Griffin, what are you doing? I, I got the nose on. Okay, once you have the nose that we are, we are basically etching lines into the cat to show oh. where the feet go. See these lines here? We're gonna draw mm -hmm. like that with our toothpick. And so we're gonna do front legs if we can, back legs if we can. This is the back of my cat, so I don't have to worry about the face. And I'm actually gonna go to the front here and I'm gonna draw a line right down the middle because this is where the two legs separate. Do you see that? Um, if I want, I can take my toothpick and I can make little cat claws on the toes. Cat claws, cat claws. I'm drawing four little lines for my little kitty toes. And you can't, I wish you could see it better. Let me see, maybe I can, what? Wait, 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 I gotta, I can figure this out. No, it's not gonna zoom. Focus, focus. I kind of see it. They're blurry. So you will have all of those things sort of etched into your cat. Whew. And then you think to yourself, man, that's a lot of work. I'm done, right? No. Almost. We're almost done. Sort of. Cora and Kylie, do you have a question? No, I actually accidentally pressed my hand. Yeah, the good news is your clay is still wet. Um, so if you, if there's anything that happens to your clay that you don't like, um, you can fix it, you can change it. Uh, if, if for some reason um, you don't like the shape, I have to say now is the time to fix it because we're gonna be painting. And once you paint that clay, 
you definitely don't want to be rolling it in your hands. Um, we've given you acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is um, plastic based. It will come off of your hands. Oh, very nice. Um, you made a finger puppet. It will not come off your clothes. It will not come off your carpet. So whenever you get this paint going, um, be careful with it. So I think we're going to go to um, the next step. We're going to leave our cat alone. We're just going to say, that was fun, cat. I'm going to give you a break. And we're going to go to make the house that the cat lives in. Um, this is your cat house. This piece of orange paper. And it's really, the next step here, it's kind of easy. Um, are we ready for it yet? Okay, you're gonna fold, you see the cuts? You're gonna go to the top of those cuts and you're gonna fold your paper up on those lines and you're gonna fold it up out those lines. So you're just folding it up and you're creating a crease. So your paper will be folded and it'll look like these little, two little flaps right on top. That's, that's kind of the easy part, right? Folding it up, nice and creased. Then you're going to stand your paper up and those sides are going to cross over. And what you're and what you're doing actually is you're making a little box for your cat to live in. Do you see that when you folded those over? And then you're just going to take your glue stick and you're going to glue the, the square part that's on the bottom. I'm getting stuck. I did this part. I folded it to where it is, but where is square thing? So and when you um, how do you how do you make the feet? Okay, we're gonna get to the feet in the middle. Right now, we're talking about the box, okay? And then I'll help you with the feet in a second. So you're all you're doing is you fold it in, then you stand it up and you fold one side over the other. What and, do you, uh, and can push you it down. move your paper up because we can't see that? Can you see? So all I did was so fold. Oh, how do like you this? fold it? Uh, you fold it to the cut. It's been cut up about two inches. So you fold it to the cut and then it's already folded in half. So then you just keep one side folded up and then you fold it over and then you just sort of push them down and you're making a box. Look at mine. Okay. You'll, so you'll like notice this. that the overhang is a little bit bigger. That's because we didn't actually measure it. We just guessed. Like this. Um, <laughs> but you're going to basically make, yep, make a little box. And this is going to be the house where your cat lives. See? going to be it's like he's in timeout or something um but this is just Ms. basically Griffin, how do you make the screen. house again okay so you have your does everybody have their piece of construction paper and it's got the fold in the middle right there's a cut in it so you fold up the cut all the way to where the cut doesn't go anymore and you fold the paper up so it becomes like you know see like these two flappy sides you keep one side folded up, you put the other down like this. See that? The one that's down, you put glue on it. Ba -ba -da -da. Then you fold this in and stand it up and it makes a box. Well, part of a box anyway. And it should stand on its own. I don't know how else to tell you how to do it. It's kind of tricky, but it's also kind of, um, once you do it, it makes sense. You know what I mean? I, I didn't make my first box like this until like two months ago. So it's a new skill for me. Bye. All right. Um, you you um, do have some edges hanging over your paper and that's fine. Later, if you want, you can cut it smaller or you can just leave it big. Okay, so we have our cat house. We have our cat. We're gonna do the next tricky thing. We are going to paint a layer of paint on the cat. And as somebody was asking me about feet, right? Who was asking me about feet? Did you figure it out? Whoever needed the feet help? How do you make the house again? Okay, I'll show you one more time. Let me see if I can find another piece of paper. Oh, actually my glue is still. Okay. Do you have this piece of paper right here? 
Yeah, I do. Okay. And do you do you see where the cut is? Have you are you able to fold your paper up like this? Uh huh. Okay. Keep one side up and push the other side down. So are you able to get to this step? Yeah. Okay. Put glue on the one that's folded down. Where? Right here. Uh, right here on the top. So right in this section. Right on here. On the bend? Yeah. Uh, on the whole thing. The whole bottom section. This whole little squarey rectangly thingy. See that? You got your glue right here. Okay. What you're going to do now is you're going to fold the center like this. See how that folds? And you're going to um, push this flap down. So it sort of makes like. What? How do you fold it? So it's got to fold in the middle here. See this fold in the middle? Uh -huh. Okay. So you just, so you flap it, you just fold it upright because it already has the fold. You just go on the fold. Uh -huh. And then if you take this flap down, it should meet up on the fold there. And then you just sort of tilt it to standing. Boom. And it should make a box. Half of the box or just? Just half, just a, it's just half of a box. It, it's just basically two walls. It's giving it, your cat a little tiny room to, to live in. Can I? Okay. Um, and you can come back and watch the video and um, practice the box because the box really isn't that important. It's just what we're using as a display for our cat. Because if we look here, this cat has an orangey yellow background. So we decided we'd just give our cat an orange background. So the thing we're going to do next is we're going to paint our cat. And the best way to do that is to stand your cat upright. Um, I don't know how to make the feet. Is like the lines that are in the feet. Okay, so all I did was take my toothpick and I just drew, I basically, it was like drawing with a pencil. It's like I drew a line straight down and then I drew legs here on the side. It's just like you would a pencil. And you're basically using your toothpick like a pencil to draw cat legs. The shape doesn't really matter, but this will give you an idea. Uh, this book here will give you an idea of what that shape, those shapes could be. See straight lines down and then maybe like a little whoop and you're just tracing it inside with your toothpick. Uh, and then I just use my little toothpick like a pencil to make little toe lines, but you don't have to. Okay. Are you going to read that book to us? Uh, it's possible. That's the plan. <laughs> We're going to see if we get there. Maybe at the end, if we stick around. Um, actually, before we paint, we're going to do something. Um, see your little pea-sized yellow, this little yellow foam here? You're actually going to make two eyes. So break it in half. OK. And cats don't have round eyes, not like circles. What kind of, what shape eyes do cats have, do you think? Like ovally triangles. Yeah. They're, ovally yeah. Triangle. yeah. They're like ovally triangles. They're ovals that come to a point. So I'm going we to make use the yellow. Um, yes, you're going to use the yellow hole. now. Mm -hmm. And you probably have more than you need. You're actually not going to need a lot unless you want giant eyes for your cat. So um, I roll a little ball, rolling a little tiny little ball, and then I'm just going to pinch it flat. Uh, and we want this to be flat because, um, you know, Art, we already have the texture on our cat face. And I'm going to um, make it so it kind of gets wider on the outside. It looks like a croissant. <laughs> um, and then it has little points on the inside. And I'm like, I hold it up against my cat face. and like, oh, this eyeball is way too big. So I know I actually need less clay. It's too sticky to do anything with it. Is it too sticky? Well, what you can do is um, just keep working it. Uh, is it sticking to your fingers? Is that the problem? Because mine's really dry, so mine's not sticky at all. In fact, I'm having to get it. I'm having to get it a little bit wet, so that I can attach the eye to my cat right above the nose. With that yellow foam clay, you guys, when you split it in half to make the two eyes, it kind of makes like a big stringy part in the middle. If you just keep rolling it into circles, that stringy part will go away. Yeah, just keep rolling it and rolling it and rolling it until it makes a nice little ball and then squish the ball and shape it. 
like just like Play-Doh. Um, you could try to get your eyes around the same size. I don't know that I pulled that off, but I did my best. I had to get the back of mine a little bit wet. Is there anything else we could use? Uh, you could use the other clay if you had any left over um, and put that on. Or you can, let, let me finish my thought before you interrupt, please. So you can uh, use this clay or you can use your uh, toothpick and you can draw your eyes in. You don't have to put the clay on, okay? If you have a question and I'm talking, can you please put it in the chat so that um, I can finish my thoughts? So I've got my cat eyes, I got my cat nose. I wish you could see it a little bit better. My, my eyes look huge, but don't worry, I can fix that. And um, I'm gonna push them onto my cat as best as I can. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna paint. And so the paint is actually gonna help stick the eyes on on the outer edge. We're gonna paint it all. We're gonna paint the whole thing. So you're gonna get your paintbrush and you're gonna keep this on your, on your palette because you don't want to paint your table, you don't want to paint your clothes. Um, and you're going to paint all around. Now I don't have a palette, which is shocking. Wait, yes, here we go. Yes, I do. Okay, so I've got my paint in my tub. Yours is in a tub. I didn't have a tub, so I just had to squeeze it out of my tube. I'm going to get my paintbrush. I'm going to paint everything except the eyes. So I'm gonna actually start really carefully. Um, see if I can do this. And I'm gonna work around the shape of my eyes first. Probably would have helped if I didn't have a long handled brush. Okay. So I'm gonna start by going around the outer edge of my eyes. Oops, I painted over my eye. That's okay. My eyes will just have weird painty shape. I'm gonna paint this eye over here. I'm gonna paint over the nose. I'm gonna paint in every single little piece that I can. Uh, because your paint is wet and because your clay is wet, it's not gonna necessarily cover the whole cat on the first coat. We're actually gonna paint a coat, wait for it to dry a little, and then paint a second coat. You'll notice if you drew on whiskers that they're gonna disappear. Don't worry, when your paint dries, you will still be able to see those etched in whiskers. Um, it's just, it's hard to do when your paint is wet, but when it dries, it dries hard and the, um, and the shapes you carved in underneath will show through. So I'm starting with my head around my eyes and I'm gonna work my way to my ears and I'm gonna paint every little thing. Now here's where it might get a little bit messy for you if you have wipes nearby or a wet paper towel or a napkin, because chances are um, you might get this on your hands. If you get paint on your hands, do not wipe your hands on your clothes. Can you all repeat that on the count of three? Do not wipe your hands on your one, two, three. Do not put do not wipe your hands on your clothes. Okay, <laughs> on your clothes. Don't do it. Can wipe I your... tell you something? Um, it doesn't. Yeah. I don't. I didn't need to draw my whiskers on because guess what? You I'm making put... clay whiskers. Yep, you can do that too. If I'm going to show you a little secret about acrylic paint. Say I got some on my hand. Oh no. I am definitely not going to wipe this on my clothes. I can wipe it on my paint palette if that's paper. I can wipe it on a napkin or I can always just wipe it on my hands until it's dry. And then I could just wash my hands later. So don't wipe it on your clothes. Don't do that. Your parents will be so mad at me. They'll be like, why Mrs. Griffin, did you give them paint that will stain my clothes forever? All right, so. I gotta get in the ears. Paint now, the ears, like the front of the ears. Sorry? Do we paint the front of the ears? You're like... gonna paint everything. You're gonna, okay. and then you're gonna turn everything except for the eyes. And then you're gonna turn it and you're gonna paint the back of everything. You're gonna paint it all. The only part you're not gonna paint is this very bottom here. See the bottom? You're not gonna paint that because, um, well, you don't need to, that's where it stands. 
Okay. What if you did? Uh, if you did, that's fine. Well, okay. Won't hurt anything. Yeah. Um, it, it just know that it may stick to the paper if you have yours on paper, and so um, so it may be harder to get off later. So um, let's see. I wanted to get. I will lift up my tail to get to the bottom of my tail. I can't find my acrylic plate. Oh wait. I think I accidentally broke my tail off. So now I'm going to get really messy putting my tail back on. Whew. What? It's okay. I'm getting messy, but I'm not touching my clothes. All right. Da, 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 da. I do have really painty fingers. So let's keep wiping them, wiping them. Maybe not on my book. Let's see, here's where it gets tricky when you have to turn it around. It'd be cool if we all had those little spinning, like Lazy Susan things. We could just spin our paint, um, our sculptures around. A lot of artists actually have those things that spin so that they don't have to touch their um, sculptures when they're working on them. They just spin the little rotating circular thing and voila. You know, uh oh. A lot of cake makers, makers actually do that with Wait, cake. So I can turn it. Yeah. So mine because it's so bumpy, it looks like real fur. That's very cool. So whew, this is getting uh it's getting hairy over here. I'm having tail issues. Um if my tail keeps falling off, I might just use part of my <laughs> um toothpick to just remember how we attach the head with the toothpick? I might have to do that with the tail. Somehow. That's what I that's actually what I did. Yeah. All right. So I accidentally painted on this eye. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little dot right in the middle. What? OK. I need to find a better way to attach my tail. Wish I would have thought of this before I painted it. OK. So I'm just doing a little bit of patchwork on my tail here, keep it nice and solid. And so if I do that with my clay, I'm just going to add more paint to smooth and it And you could out. read us the book now. Yep, that's my plan. Wow, it's like you could be a teacher. You should definitely think about that. So now that your first layer is, is on, the next step is we sort of want to wait a few minutes for it to dry. It's not going to dry completely because um, our clay is wet. And this is going to take at least a week to dry, by the way. Um, at least a week to dry because the clay has to dry and it's going to be harder for the um, clay to dry when there's a layer of plastic acrylic paint on it. So I'm going to read this book while we wait. Hopefully I won't get uh, too much paint on it, but I guess if I do, it doesn't matter because it's my book. Here, I'll protect it. I'll protect it with this piece of paper. All right. Wait, 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 wait. I got a better plan. I'm going to move this to the side. Goodbye, cat. Bye. Goodbye. What? Goodbye, other one cat. Here we go. The artist who loved cats, the inspiring tale of Theophile Alexander Steinlin. And then if you look at this, all you see are basically cats. And I have paint all over my hands. There he is sitting on his chair with his cats. And unfortunately, you might not see the bottom of the book because my pencil sharpener, wait, let me turn my pencil sharpener. Let me get rid of this journal. I can do this, I can make this work. All right. Okay. As she was strolling down the Rue Montclan with a fresh baguette tucked under her arm, Antoinette paused to see what was new in the cluttered shop window of Monsieur Avaru. So there she is with her baguette. There were lots of things she had seen already. A broken old clock and a one-eyed teddy, porcelain dolls and a china dish, leather-bound books and a filigree fish, a candelabra and a silver ladle, 23 goblets on a spindly table. She peered deeper inside and her eyes opened wide. I don't recall that interesting cat. I wonder where Monsieur found that. 
The sign said open, so she pushed on the door, which made a bell twinkle at tinkle at the back of the store, which made Monsieur Avereau come down the stair and up to the front to see who was there. Bonjour, Antoinette, he said with a smile. Have you time to come in and browse for a while? Bonjour, she replied. Comment allez-vous? That's French for good day and how do you do? Please, will you tell me about that sweet little cat? And she pointed to the shelf where that little cat sat. Oh, the bronze. It's by Stylin. That's one of his cats. It's really quite rare. Stylin? Who's that? Monsieur was soon holding the cat in his hand, so she dropped the baguette in an umbrella stand and set herself down on a comfortable stool because Monsieur's tails were the best kind of school. Theophile Steinlin was an artist, of course, who loved to observe and draw cats of all sorts. Ooh, said Antoinette. Please tell me more. I love to hear stories about the things in your store. Excusez-moi, said the cat. This is my tale to tell. I knew Monsieur Steinlin. I knew him quite well. Hmm, poor Noir. Where shall I start? How does an artist begin to make art? See, it's just like our cat. When Stylin was young, even younger than you, he started to draw and he drew and he drew. He loved to watch cats tumble and play and spent hours sketching us every which way. That's a lot of cat sketches. That's a lot of cats. In school, Stylin studied fabric design, worked hard, got a job, and was doing just fine. Still, he wanted to paint. He wanted to draw all of the interesting things that he saw. He wasn't enticed by cathedrals or kings, preferred everyday people doing everyday things. He drew laundresses and farmers and women in hats. But most of all, Stylin still loved to draw cats. In 1881, Stylin moved with his wife to Paris to embrace the creative life. Ah, oh, what a time to arrive in this city. The culture, the character, so wild, so witty. And on the edge of Paris, at the top of the hill, Le Montmartre with its art and its busy windmills. Here at the feet of every woman and man, march to the beat of we can, 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 can. We can do what it takes to follow our heart. We can make the world better with our music and art. Paris was a great place to be for art at the turn of the century, 1900s. Okay, 56 cats and nary a mouse lived with his family in a sweet little house. I wish I could take time to count them all. Steinlin had talent. He was willing and able, but at first it was hard to put food on the table. After hours drawing scenes that he saw on the street, he traded his sketches for something to eat. Hey, you want a picture? Could I have some bread? I mean, that's really pretty much how it went. And here is the Caveau de du Chanois. <laughs> Ooh, I, I'm not French. He met friends at Chanois, that chic cabaret known for lively salons and unique shadow plays. It was such an inspiring place to be, rubbing shoulders with Ravel, Valvedon, and Satie. Those are famous French artists. The cabarets were bustling with many musicians who needed cool covers for their compositions. And Chanois began printing its own magazine full of stories and songs from the cabaret scene. Stylin was asked to submit illustrations. At first, he accepted with some hesitation. Have you ever been nervous to try something new? Not sure it was something you'd be able to do? Well, Stylin gave it a try and was glad he said yes because his cartoons of cats were a surprising success. And here's some of that Art Nouveau stuff we were talking about, some of that really fancy art. And these are all Steinlin's pieces and most of them have cats in them. In posters, he featured his daughter Colette or his pets like you see in this ad for a vet. He drew bicycles, Coco, and soldiers in hats, but most of all, Stylin still loved to draw cats. And then here's where he used his art for a cause. Stylin sketches protested the cruelties of war, reveled in justice and the plight 
of the poor revealed in justice. That makes no sense. He didn't use fists or weapons or words. Instead, he chose art to make his voice heard. So he's like, I don't like the war. These people aren't being fair. Let's help these people that need help and money. I mean, that's what he did with his art. And then here we go with his sculpture. Pencil and ink, pastel and crayon. Theophil Steinlin was a versatile man. He captured the sights what he saw on his walks with etching and sketching and charcoal and chalks. And just a few little sculptures like the one you see here. That's the reason this cat is so precious, my dear. He didn't do a lot of sculptures. So if you find them, they're very rare. Monsieur placed his cat on its shelf, retrieved the baguette, and walked to the door saying, Au revoir, Antoinette. This world is abounding with magic and mystery. Each thing has a past. Each place has a history. You can make the world better with music and art if you keep your eyes open and follow your heart. Mais oui, but of course, I shall always do that. Be curious and creative like artists and cats. Au revoir, she added, et merci, chers messieurs. That's French for goodbye, and thank you, dear sirs. And that's the end. And then here he is again making his cat. Um, here are some of his more famous prints. This is definitely not, um, I mean, this is definitely his most famous one. And I don't know. That's all. That's about Theophile. Theophile. Um, and he passed away in 1923, 1859 to 1923. So now we know all about him and cats. And does anybody have one cat or two cats? Does anybody have 56 cats? My neighbor <laughs> has five. My five? neighbor has six. Uh, that seems pretty close. So I want you to take a look at your, take a look at your cat. Um, it's definitely not going to be dry yet, but you'll be able to, um, I figured out a way. I'm just going to turn my paper. Um, you can definitely look for any spots on your cat where the um, paint has separated. Or if you missed a spot, you can go around. Um, I see like little sections on the head. Maybe I want to paint my nice little brow ridge here. Paint my nose. Man, I like this whole idea of spinning the paper. I don't know why I didn't think of that first. Are you supposed to paint the nose? You're supposed to paint everything except for the eyes. Okay. Because this is a black cat with some startling yellow eyes. Yes, Miss Phillips, I do have a question. Um, my question is, <clears throat> well, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say that um, I accidentally painted a little bit of my box on the ground. So I decided to make my cat so fluffy that my cat sheds. Oh, that <laughs> is fur that it shed. That is a great plan. Um, yeah, I have my box set aside. So the box is actually um, for way, way, way down the road. When your cat is dry, um, it's been about a week. And then when everything is dried up, then you would just stick your cat in its box like this, right? So that's so that's the eventual goal. I do want to show something with uh, to you so it doesn't freak you out. So if you look really closely, you can see that um, his head doesn't look like it's attached to its body, right? So when things are wet, sometimes they get a little bit thicker because they're full of water. And then when the water evaporates into the air, um, stuff like clay is going to shrink. It's going to get harder and it's going to shrink. So as your clay dries, your body's going to shrink, your head's going to shrink, and they may separate a little bit. So it looks like you just have a floating head. Um, and you can see that there's a line there. The reason I didn't repaint it is because I wanted to show you that if it happens, um, you're not gonna be able to push the head back down because that could break your head. Um, so what happens then is you can just take your paintbrush and you can just paint on the inside of that gap 
And even if it's still not connected, it will give the appearance of being connected. So when that happens, when you get that gap, you just paint over it again and it will separate. You can go back um, and maybe you want to wait a week or two and then add another layer of paint. It's up to you. Um, you can touch up this cat as many times as you want. You know, as long as you have paint, it would be harder to do it if you didn't have paint. So, or, or it could be an alien cat with a floating head. Or it could be, or you could, yeah, it could be that, or you could make it a bobblehead cat. It could be like, oh, look how it just bobbles there. Um, it's up to you. But I just wanted to warn you that because the clay will shrink as the water dries it, um, you may have that little layer of separation that I got for my cat. And I did want to point out that, you know, I've done this two times now, and both of my cats are very different. One of my cats is really, really tall, and one of my cats is kind of short and fat. Um, and that's just kind of like the real world. We're all a little different. Um, yeah, let me finish touching this one up, and I will tip them over so you can sort of compare them. So Yay. here is my today cat. Da -da -da -da. Nice and shiny and wet. And then here is the cat that I made before. See how they're totally different sizes? sort of different shapes, different kinds of ears. And that's going to happen because in real life, you know, nothing's really exactly the same, I guess, unless it's an identical twin. Um, so what you're going to do is have an adult um, help, help you put this someplace safe where it can dry, um, like on top of a high shelf, <laughs> hopefully if you have cats where the cats won't knock it off. Um, and then um, check on it every couple days to see how it's doing. And then when you're done, you put it in your house and that's it. That's your art. So um, I think that's it. That's all I have for you. I'm so glad that you were able to sculpt with me today. If you have any extra clay, um, feel free to make whatever you want. And if you would like, in a couple days, you can email those um, pictures to PTA Prez at gmail.com, P-T-A-P-R-E-Z at Could gmail. Could we email them to you? Well, I, if, you, if, you, if you email it to that email address, then, I, then we get it. Then everybody gets to get it, okay? Okay, but what if you email it to you? Would you be able to put it on there? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. I know the address. <laughs> I, I can forward Look it. Look at my cat, it has a flower on it. Very nice. All right, so we are 15 minutes over. I thought it was fun today. It was interesting. We did something different. If you'll look in the chat, uh, Mrs. Phillips has put ptaprez at gmail.com where you can send us pictures. Um, and that's it. Thank you for doing the art lesson with us. Yes, thank you for I'm coming. Me. And Kitchen. don't forget to come next month for our last, our very last one this year. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Have a good rest of your week. Thank you so much. Bye. Good week. Thank you.